day, everyone. Uh, what we wanted to do was uh, the format of this session is going to be very, very informal, and we are going to get like two luminaries. I'd like to introduce them to you. First of all is Mohit. Mohit is the CEO and founder of Inmobi, one of the truly successful companies um, in the mobile ad tech space, and they're doing wonderfully well, and the entire startup community is actually uh, really kind of uh, impressed by all the traction that Inmobi has garnered over the last like three or four years. Welcome, Mohit. Thanks, thanks, Yuga. And I would also like to welcome Sri, Srini Srinivasan. He's the founder of Aerospike, and prior to prior to this, he's been a database whiz, got his PhD out of Wisconsin-Madison, worked for IBM, worked for a couple of startups like Liberate, and one more startup which got acquired by Yahoo, and he spent a number of years at, at the Yahoo Big Data Analytics kind of function uh, before starting Aerospike. Please welcome Srini. Thank you. So what we'll do is we'll actually kind of just sit down informally, and I'll, what I'm going to do is like, uh, break this uh, session into four major themes. I hope all of you can hear me. Please. So we'll start with uh, Mohit first. Mohit, uh, in today's world, a startup is no longer a startup when it used to, what it used to be like in the 1990s when I did my first startup. Uh, everything moves fast. There's velocity of business. There's veracity of information that you want to actually provide to your user base, especially being mobile, online. Uh, so could you just talk us through some of the challenges from when Mcode started, became InMovie, and all the things that you have to deal with, not only on the business side, but the technology side, et cetera. So before I, uh, you know, delve into the history of InMovie and the scaling, I just want to mention a very, very unique fact about the training. Uh, so I have a very special bond with Srini. Uh, when I was coming to India from US to start this company, Srini was sitting right next to me on that plane and we started chatting and he said, so what do you do? So I said, uh, I don't do anything as of now. I'm going to India to start a company, something to do with mobile. I just gave him the vague idea and here we are, I think. And then we met uh, after three years, in movie, uh, M Coach became in movie and Srini launched his own company and then he wanted to uh, basically walk us through uh, this unique product that he built for ad technology. So that's where, you know, some, sometimes things are meant to be. And, uh, you know, it's glad to be here with him. So, we, answer to your question is, uh, uh, I think we knew uh, when we were founding uh, a startup in mobile that this, this the whole uh, domain is going through the explosion. And just to guys give you a sense, uh, and Coach initially was a search based mobile startup. It was very much like, uh, you know, what you see today, uh, Groupon, something on, something on mobile, short, uh, short SMS and all those kind of things. Uh, in seven months, that model failed and we figured out, uh, we were ahead of little time and we needed to, uh, you know, re-engineer whole thing. So we pivoted the whole model, uh, again to mobile advertising the way it is today, uh, very contextual based on the user and it's basically, basically on app and, uh, mobile and we rewrote all our software and as soon as we basically got first two customers the server crashed because we were hoping that you know the whole thing was designed for 100,000 requests per second uh, per day and we thought this is a pretty huge volume I mean who would have thought and then there used to be a small publisher even in those times who was selling this ringtone and music and within two hours the whole server crashed and that's when we realized that we are in the world basically where number one matters. Eventually you need to be ready for uh, uh, all these uh, eventualities way ahead of time and that's where uh, we were early in the game. We heavily invested on our data system, not only on the batch side, even on the real time processing and uh, the traditional databases system. So in that sense, I think we took some early calls which has helped us over here, separating our application that what can be processed through batch, what can be processed in real time and uh, what can be done in a classic uh, database system. So I think some early thought, early thinking, and some good calls, I would say we have been lucky in that way, uh, has helped us. So today you f find yourself at stupendous volumes compared to what it was maybe four years ago, right? Could you just uh, care to shed some light in terms of how many data centers you have? What is the volume of data that you kind of uh, process, say, on a per second basis and on a per day basis? many ads you serve? 
so so currently basically we are uh, ser- we are serving ad in at least 165 countries across the globe so every second there are around 125000 requests per second uh, that hit our system uh, our data center are uh, located four continents across the globe so that we can reroute the user to the best possible location based on uh, their own location because of latency and in ad tech it's basically a three three kind of major processing that happens the first one is the enrichment of the data as soon as a request comes in how much you know about the user you know we have a lot of cached information where we want to see what do i know about user what what he likes what he doesn't like and then the second process is uh, after enrichment is the inference sometimes you get a lot long which doesn't mean anything but then you start to figure out hey this is the point of interest this is what is going on in that place so those sort of inference is made over there and the third part is auction and uh, all these three things generally needs to happen in less than 20 millisecond so 120000 requests per second that we get we have to process them and respond in a best possible way in 20 millisecond because mobile world is very latency sensitive uh, within 100 millisecond if you don't respond generally your request is terminated and that's the opportunity lost and uh, in order to do all these we roughly generate 50 terabyte of data every day uh we have more than a petabyte of active cluster where we do all these number crunching uh science uh, analysis whatever needs to happen and that is sent back to these uh application server that cache information and they process it all on the real time so these are some uh, numbers uh just to give you a sense all these numbers they have tripled year over year so we are expecting the active cluster to be roughly 3 petabyte in a year from now the request somewhere uh more than 600000 requests per second and similarly you know uh the batch processing will be triple what we have been doing this year so so now uh, coming back to this old kind of uh, uh association that you have with training i'm sure it had nothing to do with you picking aerospike very early but you're one of the early adopters of aerospike and actually have had fun with it let's put it that way and it's actually served you well could you shed some light on that so So when I was talking about these processing, you know, where you do enrichment, inference, and you do the auction, that you know who wins the bid, uh, we were using EH Cash, and the problem is basically, you know, in today's world, there's nothing you can scale up. You cannot just throw on the memory. You can just cannot throw on the money, and we are still a very stingy startup. Uh, every last every last dollar that I have, probably I would spend on a good engineer than on a software and a hardware. So that's the philosophy I believe in. uh so we were in that mode but this was just becoming more and more complex and that's when uh you know shini wrote me a mail and he said i have a uh product very precisely for ad tech industry and i want you guys to just take a test ride and see what it is and we really looked at and at this point of time i think uh, aerospike was the only product uh that was solving three of our main requirement one was basically we have a very he- uh, heavy write because we are updating this information all the time you know some feeds are coming and they are update- updating it all the time and at the same time i don't want to suffer on the read so if you use cassandra memcache and all those things there is a there is always a trade off and we were not okay doing any kind of trade off anything needs to happen on a real time basis if i want to write 500000 requests per second it should be able to handle it same thing on the read and the third most important i don't want to deal with redundancy redundancy and the fail failure mechanism you know i don't want to build anything it should just run and i think those are the three things we tried it and i think the whole demo was roughly 15 days and uh, we were in production i think that was one of the fastest uh, we just tried it we just push it into the production and uh, since then we have uh, you know aero spike has been a very integral part of our whole stack uh, where we yeah, you know use it all the time on for all kinds of uh, real uh, streaming processing i also find aerospike uh, aerospike to be very sensitive to the needs i think they are very uh very much listen to uh, what's happening on the real life and what are some of the challenges so i i find it a very collaborative environment over there and with the recent effort of making it open source is just i think icing on the cake so hopefully a lot of people will come to now that's turnover to shini uh you've got like tremendous endorsement here from mohit uh but one of the things challenges with the no sequel big data trends is like there's too many people making similar noises and so it'll be great to kind of uh, hear from you how you position yourself differently 
why you are like maybe 100 times faster than us let's say a mongo in certain situations um, if you can shed some light on that i think it'd be very useful to the audience now okay so uh thanks mohit for sharing that uh, you know how we met and so on and one of the things uh, before i go into answering shrikant's question one of the things that has been most um, valuable and most I should, you know that I most cherished uh, about you know uh, aerospike and the fact that you know founded it with of course a colleague uh, you know who was here last year Brian was here last year uh, the keynote and the most thing the thing I most cherish is that I get to work with people like Mohit and others and we are trying to do work uh, moving forward both the technology the product the business in multiple markets all over the world it's just a pleasure to work with folks like Mohit and Srikant as well. Now to answer the question, the philosophy, I'm just going to give you like two high level philosophical points. Uh, one is uh, Aerospike, uh, when Brian and I met, uh, we discovered, uh, or I think Brian discovered it first, uh, the presence of SSDs and how storage has changed forever. You know, the example I have is, you know, we are here in Bangalore, you know, a main memory in terms of distance, is probably like you know, two or three kilometers away. Um, you know, rotational disk is really California. Uh, what SSDs give you is, you know, maybe UBC. So now that you have different between here to UBC and here to California, you can build a database uh, by rewriting, you know, not just based on SSDs, but also multi core, better processors, uh, better DRAM, and so on, something is 100 times faster. So we went up did that. There's a whole bunch of details you can go look at. Code is open source. The second part, is actually relevant to what Mohit talked about. Um, you know, I, I was at that time at Yahoo and Brian was in other companies uh, which were on the internet. What we repeatedly saw was the difficulty of building Google scale things. Google had solved it, of course. What we at Aerospike wanted to do was to build technology which enables other people, like Mohit, for example, is a good example, but several others of our customers to build the Google scale applications. Four years later, we're sitting here, and InMobi is definitely Google scale. And we have, you know, nine of the 15 non-Google Google scale companies as customers. Uh, so that is kind of to answer the question. So a couple of things. Uh, you mentioned open source. I think when you started, uh, the first few versions of your releases were not open source. And now we're focusing on that. Uh, please uh, give us a little bit of insight in terms of what that roadmap looks like. How do you want to build that community? Because uh, competition, I would call them competition, but other players in the space like MongoDB and clouds, etc., have actually put things out. And that is that becomes very critical also in terms of adoption both within your customer base and outside. So when we started the company, both Brian and I, even in the early days, uh, almost four years ago, had discussions about making a product open source. Uh, we are a little bit more traditional in the sense that we are C programmers. We worked inside uh, Unix kernels, real-time clients, and dealt with a lot of real-time issues. What we wanted to do was to build the technology and prove it uh, in the market before we kind of donated it to the community. And that's precisely what we've done. We have used the most high per highest performing internet uh, applications as a test bed to prove out our technology. Now that we know that it, it actually does work better than everything else out there in a class of use cases, we would like now the community to kind of take benefit from it, of course, but also start contributing. We do realize that uh, every company, in every company that you can think of, the smartest engineers are outside the company. So we just wanted to make sure that we built something uh, which was valuable enough for these smart people and then share it with them. And the second thing is we believe the time is right currently with the uh, crossover from uh, internet-based uh, enterprises to the general enterprise area. So that, that's it. So from a traditional brick and flick perspective, uh, you're out there selling now and you're seeing some traction in the financial services space in addition to mobile eye care and uh, HMS. So in the context of traditional brick and click, um, how, how did that success happen in the first place and how is it positioned vis-a-vis? Because they have myriads of like uh, database technologies inside, they have tools, etc. And this is yet another new thing. Yeah, I think I think some of the interesting things is you got to look at the trends. I mean, if you look at the evolution of database technologies, um, a lot of them happened in the enterprise uh, 30 years ago, 20 years ago when I was doing my PhD and so on. Uh, and then, for whatever reason, 
uh, the problems at the enterprise level were solved. All the new data problems were happening on the internet side. And there is no um, kind of surprise that a lot of the new databases, the NoSQL databases, if you will, were all products of internet companies. Now, many of them actually didn't attack it the way, for example, Aerospike did, but that doesn't matter really. The, the key thing is the new problems that enterprises need to solve are related to consumers all being internet consumers. Uh, a, a CIO of a bank who I met recently told me that uh, every one of his customers was now spoiled by them. What that meant is they want instant kind of access to their information, and they wanted consistent access to the information. And that's kind of the difference, right? I mean, some of the things we talked about on the internet are about speed, scale, and reliability. Speed actually provides you scale and reliability. That, that kind of what, what we've found in Aerospike. Enormous speed provides you enormous scale and enormous reliability. And that's what you know, folks like InnoBee are benefiting from. Now, to cross over to the enterprise, we also, from day one, we are a traditional database, so we care about consistency and safety of the data above uh, speed and scale and reliability. So having all four of these enables enterprises now to service uh, internet-like uh, applications. So that's the trend we should be looking forward to. Mohit, back to you. A uh, couple of things. Whenever you are in a startup environment and you are dealing with another startup uh, who is part of your technology stack or a critical part of your technology stack, it is very critical uh, that enough innovation happens at both ends and both people actually kind of go towards the same, the same goal because otherwise it could be disaster. Uh, so in this case, it's obviously worked out beautifully uh, in the context of Aerospike. Uh, have you actually contributed a lot of ideas back to Aerospike and have they actually come back? Has it been a very, very good symbiotic relationship and is that critical? Yes, I think it's it's very critical. I, I believe if you are a startup, it's always... Uh, very beneficial to work with a different startup because they understand the pain point exactly what you're going through. They also understand that money will be a problem. <laughs> it will not be spent very easily. And they also understand that, you know, uh, we are in this together and it needs to be a very collaborative approach. So I think uh, whenever Shrini is here, I think we will generally we always catch up. And I think his team is also very helpful. Some of his team members, uh, we made a point, I think we meet roughly two times in a year. And uh, over some very real use cases and I think so far I have seen a very good uh, approach to it how to solve it because we are representing a very strong industry uh, they are you know advertising is a very big force in mobile and digital world you know we have Google and Yahoo of the world they have already proven it so it's, it itself is a pretty huge economy so the problem that we face is not something very unique it's very generic uh, so I think it has helped both in that way to uh, figure out what's the right right way to forward and I think with this open source I believe that can be taken to a very next level as well. Uh, as a company we are a very staunch uh, believer in open source philosophy. We have actually open sourced some of uh, many of our own software and now uh, this one uh, that Aerospike has made that we already use so I'm pretty sure I think we, we will look forward to do a very active contribution to that in solving some new problems. Uh, I want to actually uh, turn it to Positioning standpoint, again, uh, going back to my first question, there is enough noise. People clearly have taken advantage of the trends in hardware. We, as you were pointing out, can build something 100 times faster. At the same time, I mean, uh, when you have to scale and serve the needs of like hundreds of enterprises and hundreds of companies that are getting smaller, um, what are some of the challenges that you see and what are you kind of trying to build in your roadmap which will actually fortify yourself from those challenges? Right. Um, to some extent, right, uh, I, I just want to, before I go, go ask a question, I want to point one, one thing. There are a couple of key features of Aerospike which have been you know, impacted or basically done because of the engagement in mobile. One of them is sets. And, you know, I think we'll see uh, more of those happening. Um, in terms of what we see as challenges, um, we are actually not doing any different than what IBM and Sybase and Oracle did in terms of building traditional databases. They first built out, uh, you know, for example, IBM built out IMS, which is still actually a billion dollar business. Uh, and then they built DB2 uh, and queries. You know, Oracle, you know, similarly had its data storage system they built. Uh, and then on top of which they added features over the years. And eventually, of course, did applications and mature company, you know, very successful and so on. So when we started um, Aerospike, uh, our goal was not any different. We just wanted to modernize the database technology to the level where we can provide a general purpose system for the internet scale applications, which we believed then, five years ago, was just 
going to happen all over the world and we are now starting to see that right in order to do that we had to build out of course a solid platform with scales and then we had to add features so we've spent time adding features on queries uh, and so that you know, uh, you know do not be surprised if you see uh, some level of sql support you know from aerospike in the future uh, the trick for us the challenge for us is not to slow down the basic read write paths on which we were so fast as we add more features and we have actually proven to ourselves that we have more than doubled our key value read write throughput between version 2 and version 3 of aerospike while adding map reduce like query support user defined functions time series queries secondary indexes and so on that's actually a technological challenge uh, business wise the challenge is not to do one off things as uh, mohit pointed out there are uh, Features we add because of engagement with uh, companies like Inmobi, which to us are lighthouse and representative of a vast variety of companies in that space. So we pay a lot of attention to landing in a particular vertical, like financial, retail banking, for example, where we are very applicable. You know, in telcos, where uh, telcos are moving from uh, their older systems dealing with voice to networking based things, which are on order of magnitude more traffic and travel, for example. So, so what we do is we look at each of those verticals, figure out what general purpose features are needed, and it so happens that what is needed on in the internet is now needed in the enterprise. What needed in travel is needed, you know, for example, caching. We can replace caches with a database as fast as a cache. So that is the kind of uh, challenges we are tackling right now. So this is a very important point for all the budding entrepreneurs out there. As you come up with new ideas, if you engage and everything becomes a one-off, and there's no discipline in basically figuring out patterns. Then scalability becomes an issue, and that's uh, basically underscoring what Srini just mentioned. Uh, I want to turn it over to Mohit now. From an open source perspective, right, when you actually uh, are kind of uh, encouraging a bunch of your developers to actually contribute, uh, how 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 successful ha have your contributions been back to some of the ISVs, uh, next generation ISVs like uh, Srini? So so far. Uh our open source contribution has been limited to on the data side, and uh, I think, as I said earlier, uh, we were we were early in investing, uh, you know, on on this big data system, assuming that we are going to be processing a lot of information. So, just to give you a sense, uh, I think we were just one year old company, and around two thousand eight or uh, nine, uh, we invested basically first in building our own Hadoop cluster, and it was breaking every night. And we knew that you know we have to learn it hard way, and uh, uh, what we built over there was basically with the help of the community. And at that time, it was very clear that you know whatever scale and what we have achieved with the help of some very smart engineer outside of Infobi, and we wanted to leverage them and contribute back. So even entire team has been pretty uh, you know serious about that idea. In last three four years, uh, I think we have open source at least four software, and one of them. Which is a very complex piece of data lifecycle management tool. It's called Falcon. Uh, has been contributed to uh, uh, Apache Foundation already, and it's it's in the incubation mode. Hopefully, it will be a mainline project pretty soon. Uh, in fact, very good traction on that. Hortonworks itself has adopted that. And similarly, I think we have one more software which is on the way. And I know one of our engineers she's sitting over here on Prishwari. Uh She just had the talk before that. I think she's on her way to submit one more. Uh, project possibly this year. So I believe in basically utilizing the community and as Srini was saying the best engineers are all over the place may not be in your company. So there is no better way to make them work for you than releasing your software out there in the open and you will get hundreds of engineers for free who will be contributing and might be building something very very useful. Thank you Mohit. So with that what I would like to do is uh, we have actually covered some basic themes here. I would like to actually turn it over to the audience uh, to take a few questions and please feel free to engage uh, both on the business side and the technology side and we'll try to do a round robin uh, operator principle to the best uh, possible scenario but like I'm sure there are mics all over so any questions? Please, please uh, announce yourself, company. I'm Akshay. I work at Akram. So, I, my question is really about the business side of things. So, 
what do you think about content ads? So, as we've already all been seeing on the internet, banner ads are being really ridiculed by the audience. So, people are actually uh, more and saying that they, it, it, it is actually annoying to see banner ads. So, how do you see content content ads as a future? Uh, as uh, let's say uh, after banner ads, do you see it being the future? Do you see it uh, completely removing banner ads? Let's say ten or twenty years. So, yeah, I think there is a, there's, there's sort of a backlash going on for banner ads. Uh, the main reason is uh, they appear out of uh, nowhere and generally they are not aligned with the aesthetic of the content and sometimes they look very different in that scheme as well. So, I think with the new trend is, uh, and I think we are also very ahead in that, uh, it's called native, which means you have to basically adopt to the environment you are in. Uh, so, short answer to your question is uh, definitely I think in mobile everything is moving towards very relevant uh, native content ad and it's not there yet. Banner is still a huge part of uh, monetization but I think it will completely shift over there. Uh, this is Saurabh from India. Uh, my question to you is uh, did you compare Redis uh, before uh, trying out or after trying out Aerospec? We, we almost uh, tried everything. We did Redis, Cassandra, MongoDB, uh, and even uh, Memcache, a lot of those things. Uh, we do use Redis at some place uh, where the right use is there, but uh, all the precise requirement that we had, you know, uh, like I told you, heavy reads, heavy writes with almost uh, microsecond, micro mi microsecond latency and uh, uh, completely fail proof system. I think this was the closest uh, that we come around that point. And there's always a, you know, in a startup, you want to focus on 10 things and you want to figure out what are the four that you are going to work on uh, so that you do a really good job and what is something that you can use out of the box that works. So, in, in that entire decision, I think Aerospike really. Uh, so in all these parameters, stability, operability, uh, read and write uh, across the globe. And as I told you that, you know, it needs to be in sync with all that location. So, I think those factors. Yeah, uh, my question is for uh, Srini. So, uh, I kind of heard uh, MongoDB being mentioned in the discussion uh, several times here. So, I mean, looking at Aerospike as more of a very enhanced key value store, does it really, I mean, compare with Mongo, because Mongo has a very, right now it has an aggregation framework, it has a quite an advanced query engine, right? And also if you look at something like Couchbase, which builds on CouchDB, you have prepared queries and it is in memory. So, I mean, how do you really compare as a use case, Mongo I mean, or Couch? Yeah, so... Uh, the way I look at it, Mongo, of course, does a good job of content size and so on. Yeah, think of Aerospike. I'd, I'd rather not get into too many product to product comparison here, but what I would tell you is there are use cases um, for which I think Mongo is the right thing. You know, there may be some use cases for Couch, but if you're really looking at read write workloads, if you're looking at continuous uptime, if you're looking to bet your business uh, and not be called at night, those are certain characteristics of a workload. It's not just high transaction throughput. What high speed a transaction throughput at low latency gives you for reads and writes is the ability to deal with failures seamlessly. So you can still be running 10,000 transactions per second uh, on your system while two nodes have failed, three more are being added because we can do a million in a node. It's not like you, the application is a million. It is uh, what the system can do. If you think of that way, you know, certain kinds of use cases, which are real-time, Aerospike is far ahead of every other database. Mainly because we are, as uh, Srikant also pointed out, we focused on getting the most out of the uh, latest advantages of the hardware. So, we are actually writing the moves locker, even software. So, that's all. So, I, I remember from, uh, you know, one of the benchmarks that we had with MongoDB in early days. Uh, so, in our... Uh, our key value store, there was around 1 billion values and we were doing a full refresh of it and at the same time, we wanted our system to up. Uh, we, we, we should be able to query it without a sweat and once the whole merge is done, uh, it should uh, flip to a uh, new store. 
uh, I think in early days, three, four years ago, when we tried, there was a corruption problem in MongoDB. Whenever we are doing a lot of, lot of uh, frequent up, up, updates, that was one issue that we faced over there. I, I don't know where it is. One, one last question. Uh, I kind of, uh, I mean, I've, personally, I've been looking at uh, evolution of Aerospike as the releases have gone on and the clients have developed. I kind of feel that uh, you, you guys really ignored the Python community because over the years, the client for Aerospike, which has stayed on the Citrus list, um, you haven't added the features to the Python client. It's just remained there. I mean, is there a reason for that? No, we're actually working on it right now. The only reason is we're a startup and we focus um, on various things. And I think it is now a very high priority. In fact, we had a discussion on it just yesterday. So, yes, it, it, you will see it in the future. And please do post to our forums and, and make your voice heard. And that's how we kind of fuel some of these uh, requests these days. Hi, uh, the question I had uh, was probably for uh, Mohinder and uh, Shwini as well. Uh, I, I think this is more from a generic uh, point of view. When you look at a startup, <coughs> and you know the founders clearly have a lot of vision and they spot the market opportunity. Right? So a lot of the engineering and tech uh, sort of uh, you know platforms etc. get decided to sort of post understanding what is the opportunity you're chasing. On the other, so so one is chasing the opportunity at the right time, scaling fast. And you know, probably being the first uh, sort of uh, mover in a particular space, and, and that's probably how you get funding. And, and the second piece is followed by engineering. The second is, I mean, if you look at companies like PayPal, let's say security was one of the key aspects, or the core technology which actually helped them succeed vis a vis, let's say, uh, payments, because you need a more uh, generic feature. So, so when you look at, let's say, Inmobi as an example, and how you've scaled up. How do you sort of really evaluate, you know, both the factors? One, is it the vision, market opportunity, followed by engineering, or is it something unique from the technology side, which which then differentiates you, and then you can decide which which opportunity, opportunity to chase based on you know what what you're essentially looking at. So I'll give you my my sense, and then Shini can give about Aerospike. So in Mobi, uh, so we are not a software. Uh, build uh, software and sell it. So our proposition is a very, very different uh, user base and uh, app ecosystem monetization basic uh, proposition. So we are always very driven through the vision that we have. And the vision that we have is basically just fueling the growth of this mobile ecosystem by providing monetization to publisher, by providing right audience and user to advertiser and simply user the great experience and the most relevant ad. So for us, uh, decision is generally led through that. But at the same time, we also want to make sure we take proud in what we build and we build it to scale and we build it to last. So platform has been a very integral part of our engineering and technology uh, organization. There are specific platform teams who uh, and they are mandated to not worry about uh, context and business, but worry about a technology problem that will help to solve that business problem. So I think that's the balance that we strike. Uh, but if I have to take a hard call, it's always uh, we'll go through the vision first uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll invest uh, on the technology. Yeah, uh, we are actually a startup as a purely technology company. Uh, the, the one thing I do believe uh, which kind of drives us as a company is that software, and I don't know if those of you have read Mark and Reason's article on software eating the world. I'm a big believer in that. In fact, my whole career has been that. And what that means is, you do expect hardware to double, whatever, you know, every few years, all kinds of innovations to happen. Now, the goal of a software company, in this case, we chose to focus on uh, a fast, reliable uh, database, uh, which is also consistent. You know, That's just the problem we solved. If you had a product which would actually do that on the hardware, and as hardware continues to improve, you can not just go at the rate of Moore's law, but you can go faster. Okay, if you look at the big data business, this is the business opportunity part. Technologically, we want to build the fastest, best, whatever. But why do we do that, right? We do that because, and, and the timing has to be right also. Big data has been growing way faster 
than Moore's law in terms of how much data has to be crunched to deal with real-time access. Now, if you have something, which a software like ours can now, now we have a problem which it will solve, which other people can't. Now you have both, right? But just doing technology for technology's sake um, is not definitely something I'm interested in. And I would have been in research if I wanted to do that. That's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But they are really looking at 10-year-old, uh, five-year-old kind of improvements. We are looking at how can we sell more customers, expand the business with the technology that we built today. We have uh, space for about a couple more questions. So um, I think yeah. I have a question. Um, I wanted to uh, get a sense of your reflections uh, when you open source some of the software you've built. Um, so I'm Paul from Akuma. And uh, what I wanted to know is that how do you get the community behind you? How do you get that traction? You know, when you open source stuff, for example, when Hadoop was open source, you know, the Google people was there, and then, then it was a widely applicable use case across domains, across companies, and then, you know, that was a rallying point. So when you open source stuff, when you open source your software, um, I wanted to know how do you get the community, you know, what do you use to get the community behind you? Is it superstar developers who already have attraction in the community? Um, you know, uh, how do you go about that? So, so the first thing is basically, uh, you know, when you're uh, doing open source development and you are planning to uh, open source some of your software, it's very important to understand whether it's generic enough and it's solving some uh, real problem that can be applicable to several other people. So, you know, if you are solving something very specific to you, probably that software may not be a good candidate for open source. But if you believe that you have solved something which is very unique and can help other people, uh, people as well. So that's the first step. And after that, obviously, you basically would like to interact and talk to some people who are doing something similar or maybe, uh, you know, related to the problem in some way and sense and see how, uh, you know, what kind of response you get over there. And once you get over there, probably definitely you want to bring in uh, the backing of a community or some sponsor who can be uh, the stable member of uh, that particular project and help uh, yourself. So, in our case, for example, when we launched one of the Falcon uh, data lifecycle management uh, software, we obviously approach our approach to a lot of uh, other Hadoop community member and uh, we validated whether they are experiencing the same problem and after understanding that this is a real problem and generally no uh, software stack exists who has solved that, I think we were able to generate some response from them. And I think in one year, uh, there's a lot of community people now behind uh, this as a software. So it's a process, uh, one step at a time. But as long as uh, the problem solved is meaningful, uh, the software approach is generic enough, I think community contributes to it. If I may add to that, uh, we are new to this process. But here is uh, what we are doing. Because we are, it is usually an open source company which goes closed source. I don't know if any other company which is uh, closed source is called open source uh, at this level that we are trying to do here. But here is what our basic thought is, right? Uh, we have a community already. It's essentially our customers. They're very small, but they're very, um, what I would call, dedicated. They believe in us, and there are developers in there. And having, making it open source makes them bet their business on ours more. But more interestingly, um, we could potentially, we're using our customers like Inmobi here in Bangalore, Snapdeal in Delhi, other companies, you know, in New York. So we're going to kind of start doing meetups and then we will invest uh, as a core in each of these markets, uh, you know, uh, make it really easy to use for developers. So our whole open source strategy is based on uh, developer adoption. So we'll be doing a whole bunch of ease of use. For example, you know, I do want to uh, recognize Mongo in that. They have done a great job making it really easy to use for developers. And anybody, including us, uh, can learn from that. So those are the things that you should probably need, ease of use, uh, and presence in you know, lots of markets all over the world. That's how we're going to do it. Any other questions? I think there was one here. Uh, so, uh, Aerospike as a database, it, it uh, seems quite apt for financial services space. So, uh, you know, so things like, um, you know, uh, stock exchanges or um, trading firms or, you know, doing risk analytics and those kind of things. So, uh, do you have any uh, use cases for that? Um, the answer is yes. Um, we have actually signed um, financial services customers 
we're going to be deploying later this year, typically in retail banking, which is where we started. Um, and, the, and the way, not just financial services, but some others, the use cases are to do with replacing caches. Uh, that's where, and by a database of record, if you will, right? Uh, we do not apply, though, to real-time stock trading. Those are really very specialized databases running in nanoseconds. You know, we're not that, but we can do milliseconds, microseconds, tens of microseconds. But that is, there's a, but there are some things you mentioned, like risk analytics, retail banking. Those are, I think, things where Aerospike is applicable today. Um, but also give a shout-out to our Bangalore team here, who's going to... Uh, invented a lot of the technology that Aerospike actually uses. Thank you. Uh, you've been a great audience. Uh, with that, we actually have to bring this thing to a close because we have a hard stop.